It's a call that's telling me I'm here to serve. It's a need to make a difference in the world. 24 hours, day or night, these healing hands will make it right. Looking in their eyes, I know that I'm changing lives. Changing lives. Changing lives for the better. For the better. Changing lives. Hi again, everyone. I'm Candace Kruger along with Jim Knox, and we're back again with another edition of the Best Docs Network, featuring some of the best physicians in all of the Houston area that are changing people's lives. That's what it's all about, Candace. Doctors helping change people's lives. Like our first doctor, bariatric surgeon Dr. Robert Marvin. The gastric sleeve or laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy is a weight loss operation, which means we make little incisions, do the operation on the inside with a camera. Physically, is a tapering of the stomach down from a big bag that will hold lots of food to a skinny tube that won't hold as much food. My health was deteriorating. I was so big. I was just having such a problem. I was up over 500 pounds, and I tried to do this, I tried to do that, go to the gym, do this and those bad eating habits would always come back. An ideal patient would be someone with a body mass index over 35. About 5% of the population in the United States is morbidly obese. It got to the point where I wouldn't go eat with my buddies. My guys would be like, hey, let's start, let's go eat. And I, I was so embarrassed to wear the uniform and be that big for people to look and go, ah, oh, you know, what's that guy gonna do? And uh, it embarrassed me. Officer Schultz was super obese. His body mass index was about 71 at 553 pounds, I think he was, before the surgery. Statistically speaking, there's virtually no chance he would live to a normal life expectancy at that weight. I went in weighing 554, and I remember watching the pounds from there. And for that first week, I want to say I lost like 29 pounds that first week, and I was like, wow, here we go. And it was just a steady decrease after that. I had to go through so many uniforms over that year because I want to say the first year I lost about 150, 180 pounds, somewhere in there. With the sleeve operation, he's lost over 300 pounds, I believe. So his extra body weight had decreased over three quarters. That put him in a much safer body mass index and he can expect uh, not to develop some of those medical problems or not have them progress that we would otherwise anticipate with him. And I think he's looking at living more of a normal life than he did before. If you're going to do the surgery, have the right mind frame. Go in there, do it for the right reason, and, and use it as the jump. And it'll work. It, I mean, it's worked flawlessly for me. I feel healthy. I'm able to run down bad guys. So, I mean, I just I feel like a police officer again. Janice was experiencing a lot of problems with her sinuses until she met Dr. C.T. Wynn. To hear more about Janice's story and hear other life-changing stories, log on to BestDocsNetwork.com. We are one million strong. We are united behind a cure. There are over one million colorectal cancer survivors in the United States. My name is Charles Kelly from Lady Antebellum, and I'm in this fight against colorectal cancer because it actually hits pretty close uh, to my family. My father-in-law uh, was diagnosed with it, and the thing about this disease is it is preventable, and so I encourage everybody to, to go get screened. Let's beat this thing. Well, I was having extremely heavy periods that were just getting worse and worse, very painful, just a lot of discomfort. So the only real option for me was hysterectomy or live with it until I go through menopause. And I'm young enough that I thought it was disrupting my life. So I tell you, when I started in medicine a while ago, <laughs> most hysterectomies were done abdominally. Uh, it, there was a large incision made from hip bone to hip bone patient would be in the hospital for a week and her recovery, a very painful recovery, six to eight weeks later. But what's fantastic is over the last few years, women have choices. We have technology available that allows us 
to do big surgeries through little incisions. And it depends on the patient, depends on what her symptoms are, depends on what her needs are, and what her wishes are. Oh, it was so easy. I woke up in the recovery in a chair, and within an hour and a half to two hours, I was up walking to the bathroom. No pain at all. I uh, went home in the car, um, and really I was up and walking around within, just that day I was up walking around, you know, on my own. It's a very new procedure, and there are very few surgeons in the country that perform it. Aesthetically, it's very pleasing to the patient because um, the surgeon uses one incision only. It's a very small incision, approximately two centimeters in uh, length, and we hide it in the folds around the belly button. Well, it was a whole lot easier than I expected it to be. Um, I'd had two C-sections in the past, and um, those were extremely painful procedures afterwards, and this hysterectomy, I went in in the morning, was, did the preparation and had the surgery, and I was home by three o'clock in the afternoon, walking around, fine, I was fine. I think most young women, especially those who exercise and take care of their bodies, want the option to be able to hide their scars. Um, you don't have to show them. So with, with the less procedure, I'm able to give them that option. I'm able to allow her to treat her problem while cosmetically achieving superior results. Don't forget, for more information on any of the outstanding doctors you see on today's show, head to the website, bestdocsnetwork.com. Right now, it's time to head to one of the best plastic surgeons in the Houston area. It's Dr. Lucian Rivella. Here at Rivella Plastic Surgery, we perform plastic and reconstructive surgery. We emphasize aesthetic procedures, primarily of the breast, body, and face. I was predisposed to uh, like a droopy uh, jawline and so that began to be my focus when I looked at myself in the mirror. Cheryl came to me with the concerns about her, again, the jowling area and deep lines on her face. Um, she's a yoga instructor and in particular the Bikram type of yoga where it's very hot and I think she perspires a lot and is very thin and she noticed her skin sagging. So to help her with that, we uh, did what we call a mini facelift. I talked to um, the staff first and then had a consultation with Dr. Avella and he recommended doing a mini lift. Uh, I felt like I was ready to do that and you know, just with some guidance and the questions that I asked and the way they were answered, I felt like uh, it was a comfortable procedure for me to move forward with. In general, most of the patients are women that come for a facelift. They're in their early to mid 50s. They have the signs of some jowls and what we call marionette lines. Those are lines that go down on each corner of the mouth. They have some wrinkled skin on their neck and so that would be probably the ideal patient. I'm only three weeks out of my surgery. I feel like, you know, I'm really happy with the results. Well, it's a good feeling to know that she now feels more confident and she's of course smiling and very happy with the results, so of course I feel good about it. I feel like that with the, the advice and the treatment and the service that I get at Ravella Plastic Surgery, I'm able to really maintain a level of confidence that allows me to uh, get in front of people and you know, most of the time with no makeup on, and uh, I feel really good about myself. If you eat healthy, you're going to be healthy. So what are the major rules for eating healthy? First of all, eat breakfast. It takes your body off that emergency that you've been on overnight. Emergency isn't good for your body. It causes lots of problems with blood pressure and cholesterol. 
Secondly, eat anything that is red, orange, or green. Those types of foods that are red, orange, or green tend to have what's called phytochemicals. They tend to be antioxidants and they prevent heart attacks, strokes, and many cancers. Eating a Mediterranean diet is a great idea. The Greek people have a wonderful idea about what to eat. They eat a lot of beans, a lot of fiber, not much in the way of red meat that's high in fat. Fish is an important part of your diet. We need to eat less red meat in America and more fish, and also more non-red meat, like the white meats, like veal, chicken, turkey. Red meat has more cholesterol. Also, barbecued food is not a good idea. The barbecued flavor occurs because the smoke deposits chemicals onto the surface of the meat that taste good, but they also tend to be cancer-causing chemicals. So limit your barbecue to once a week. One of the things that I learned early from Dr. Tabar, who was the person in Sweden who did that two-county trial, and that was my first introduction to real quality mammography and how it should be done. But I learned that we needed to work together and you needed to understand the pathology. So immediately, the first uh, benefit was to work closely with the pathologist. Dr. Rose and Dr. Sutton enticed me uh, to go to a meeting out in California where Dr. Laszlo Tabar was speaking on mammography and sophisticated ways to diagnose early breast cancer. And to say that I got hooked by Dr. Tabar would be an understatement. And so we came back uh, in late 1995 and determined we wanted to form a comprehensive breast center. Uh, at the time that we started this format, we were really the only uh, area in Houston outside maybe the medical center itself in which this was a routine sort of event of um, um, meeting on a weekly basis with all the different uh, physicians involved with uh, the breast cancer diagnosis and treatment and treatment planning. It's important that when we find an abnormality that the radiologist understands the pathology, knows what to biopsy, when to biopsy, and then can communicate that back to the referring physician, communicate it to the patient, and communicate to the pathologist what our concerns are. I think the uh, most powerful thing that we have been doing for close to 20 years um, is the, uh, the weekly conference, and it's dedicated to women who are recently diagnosed. And so it takes an element of commitment on all the the different um, parties involved, but at the same time when you see the benefit of that as far as uh, our ability to do a much better job taking care of the patient, it's, it's worth every second. So it really means working together as a team, working with your breast surgeons, working with the pathologist, working with the radiation oncologist, the plastic surgeons, and we work as a team. If you've had a doctor help change your life, we'd love to hear about it. Send us an email at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. My teeth needed to all be extracted. They were crumbling, they were breaking, I couldn't chew my food. He's a professional, you know, an accountant, and he's certainly concerned about finances and how to structure his, his budget. And he was a guy that um, his lower teeth were worse off than the uppers. And so that was an area that he decided to focus on. I guess this started in 2009, and this really happened in kind of in two settings. So that in 2009, we did the lower, and in 2011, we did the upper. The, the bottom is all done and I'm in the midst of having the prosthesis on the top done. And also with David, his concern uh, regarding his budget, we were able to do this without grafting. Previously, in the upper jaw, because of the maxillary sinuses, we would have to graft those areas in majority of cases that we were placing a full jaw worth of implants. Uh, but with the advent of cone beam CT, we're able to look at individuals from a three-dimensional standpoint radiographically ahead of time so as to know where the bone is so that we can position implants within that bone and avoid the need for sinus grafting and then subsequently lower his overall cost significantly as well as increase the predictability. 
No longer do I have to make sure that everything is in place where it's supposed to be in place. It's, I have, I have a new chance at a brand new set of teeth, and they don't hurt. It's, it's a satisfying to see him come back smiling, see him walking down the hallway, uh, you know, standing upright with their, their chin up smiling and, and, and being much more confident. So it, it, from a psychological standpoint, outside of the health benefits that you see, uh, the mental health benefits are, are significant. I'm a CPA. I meet with clients and uh, of high net worth clients. Appearance is important to me. It's certainly not of the utmost importance, but it's important to me. And I don't want to be embarrassed by a, by a crumbling smile line. It's a wonderful, wonderful solution. Don't forget, for more information on any of the great doctors you see on today's show, head to the website, bestdocsnetwork.com, bestdocsnetwork.com, featuring some of the best doctors in the entire Houston area, like our next doctor. Yes, we're going to feature our next best doctor. It's plastic surgeon, Dr. Greg Bancroft. Because of my history and being out in the sun a lot and not using sunscreen and not using glasses, I knew that I was gonna, I needed to do something and do a little bit as you get older. Then you're not uh, dealing with a big mess when you're 60 or 70. You know, due to her career that she worked previously, she enjoyed a good life where she worked at club meds <laughs> around, the, around the world, but obviously you're gonna get a lot of sun exposure and with that sun exposure comes changes in disorder in the collagen and the pigmentation of the skin. You wanna rejuvenate that skin and then you wanna protect it from further damage and then you also want to even out the tone to kind of correct some of that sun damage that she's occurred over the years. I came over and I talked to Dr. Bancroft and he said, you know, I really think that my new cream um, that I've um, made in my compound pharmacy would really, really help you. And in terms of the skincare products that we have here, we have basically a compounded cream where we're basically taking the cream and adding it to it specific levels of the active ingredients for each patient. So you can have someone who has more of an issue with controlling pigment or, you know, needs more rejuvenation. You can work your way up to the level of Retin-A that's appropriate for that patient. I started using the cream probably about five or six months ago and immediately noticed a difference with just the texture of my skin, um, the, the feel, um, the way that it looked and the glow that it gave me. You know when you talk about things like sun protectant that's the kind of stuff that's working from that point forward but those those damages that you've had those fine lines those wrinkles the pigment the age spots those kind of things obviously the ingredients in the skincare products we use can help even out the skin tone for that and then the rejuvenating component will build more collagen build more you know, proteoaminoglycans other protein structures within the skin as you get those built up they allow your skin to hang on to moisture better skin that hangs on to moisture better will appear plumper skin that is plumper won't have those fine lines that people complain about and so it really will start to freshen and turn the skin around so it can look better you look so youthful your skin's glowing and I call it the magic cream so um, I let people that have asked me know that I've been seeing Dr. Bancroft and that he has this wonderful cream that I call the magic cream that has worked magically on me and um, several of my friends have come here and are using it and I have noticed a great difference as well, so it's a lot of fun. If you've had a doctor help change your life, we'd love to hear about it. Send us an email at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. Originally, I was having a lot of sinus pressure. Pretty much all the time I had sinus pressure and I had a lot of headaches. I would have sinus infections pretty much back to back. I'd have several sinus infection, infections a year. Amanda has consulted multiple ready clinic uh, urgent care that does not really address her problem. All they did was to refill her prescription of antibiotics, gave her some antihistamine, and tell her to go home. But what they do is they, they, they treat her symptoms instead of treating the, the, the cause of a problem. He basically just looked at my nose and kind of tried to figure out what the problems were based on the symptoms. And he noticed immediately that my turbinates were really big. The inferior turbinate, it's a normal structure in your nose that everybody has. It has a role of filtering and humidifying the air that you breathe in. So it become enlarged and inflamed when it is irritated by either allergies, infection or pollution in the air. 
considering her busy schedule, we decide upon a two-prong uh, approach treatment. Uh, balloon sinuplasty in office to treat her sinus issue and inferior turbinate reduction to relieve her nasal obstruction. I don't really have any more sinus issues. I haven't had a sinus infection since the surgery and it's been a few months now. The advantage of uh, balloon sinuplasty is that it can be done in office. There is no uh, general anesthesia. The cost is less than doing it in the hospital and the recovery time is really quick. There's really no downtime. The patient can go back to their daily activities uh, quickly. It was, it's actually kind of funny. There's a lot of things that I didn't realize were issues until after the surgery. I know one time I was sitting in my bathroom and I was sitting there and there was a candle about two feet away from me and I actually could smell it. <laughs> that was something that I have never done before and it kind of just hit me. I was like, I can actually smell the candle. <laughs> All of our doctors here at the Best Docs Network are dedicated to changing people's lives. Like our next doctor is gynecologist, Dr. Meredith Morgan. What we want to do is try to help a woman uh, get through this time frame with the intense symptomatology. According to Dr. Meredith Morgan, intervention and management needs to be tailored to the level of severity. Uh, for mild hot flashes, home remedy self-management techniques are, are effective. For some women, yoga will work. Other women, uh, strenuous exercise. On average, you can't say that either one of them really works for everybody. But if it's good enough for an individual woman, it's good enough, and that's all she needs. There is a technique of breathing that's um, derived from transcendental meditation that actually has been studied quite a bit and found to be quite effective. There are two sets of data on the research, and there are different sets of outcomes and benefits and hazards involved in using hormones. In general, we try to start with a low dose and let the patient titrate up to a level that will produce a circulating estrogen level that's satisfactory for her response. Now there are concerns with hormone therapy. What Dr. Morgan would like to point out is that there are three major concerns against the others. First, breast cancer. Everybody's concerned about breast cancer. Uh, second is heart attacks. And that's, that's serious. But the most common one that we really address all the time is estrogen. And there's been very little historical interest. Your question was, what are we doing now as opposed to 10 years ago? Uh, we really haven't changed much in our concept about blood clots. Uh, for that reason, our preference is to try to use the non-pill forms of estrogen as much as possible. The pills go through the liver and simply put can increase blood clotting chemicals and the risk of blood clotting. Now the most common question for most women for Dr. Morgan is, how will I know what I'm going to be confronted with? Well the good news according to Dr. Meredith Morgan is that menopause is controllable. Basic message I'd like you to get is there are many ways to approach this. This is not going to be incapacitating. It's controllable. Maybe the control is the goal. We're not going to have terminal hot flashes. I am a World Series champion. I am a husband. I am an advocate. I'm in the fight for colorectal cancer. Because I lost both of my parents to this disease. Because of my friend who died 120 days after his diagnosis. As a survivor, I want to spread the word so everyone out there knows the importance of early screening for colorectal cancer. One simple test can save your life or someone you love. Get screened. Be a part of One Million Strong. We are One Million Strong! My symptoms are, you know, I don't want to walk on the ball of my foot. Uh, it, shoot, it shoots sharp pains up my leg. I mean, it feels like a nerve's being pinched off. Wanda's a patient that presented to my office complaining of shooting pain, uh, you know, down her heel, upper leg, and uh, so immediately I started thinking maybe there's a possibility of a nerve, uh, you know, compression. I told him my symptoms. He suspected what it was. He wheeled in a little mini ultrasound machine, did it right there on the spot, and you know, diagnosed the problem. And we set up surgery because I had already tried other treatments with other doctors and it didn't work and we were done. This is your ankle joint. 
and you have a major nerve that courses through here. There's a natural tunnel. It's called your tarsal tunnel. What happens is the tunnels get real tight and the clamp on the nerve are the protective covering, which we call the flexor inaculum. The nerve tends to get stuck underneath it. So what happens is when the nerve gets compressed, it's extremely painful. What he's trying to do is avoid that numbness, and for most people it works. You know, you basically take what's pinching the nerve off away, and you make room for it, and life goes on. And the advantage of this is, like, it's not a surgery where you're really held up for a while, where you have to, you know, stay at home and you can't put weight, because I want the patient walking as soon as they can, because I don't want those tunnels to tighten up or to close up. So I want to make sure the nerves can glide. Wanda had tarsal tunnel surgery. Uh, she comes back to the office three to five days later and uh, just dressing change. No need for x-rays because we're not doing any bone work, uh, which is great too, because if you're not doing bone work, it's not necessarily as painful. There's less swelling. Uh, and so two weeks later, sutures are out and she's walking on her own. I'm very happy. I've actually recommended him and, and all my friends that have gone to him and they've had more extensive things done to them where you know you're reattaching muscles and putting in screws you know really crazy stuff um, they they also think he's awesome the side effect that one has from nerve decompression is not pain it's lack of sensation it's numbness and that's temporary because with time they regain their sensation but it's a really easy recovery and it provides immediate relief if you've had a doctor help change your life, we'd love to hear about it. Send us an email at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. I thought, okay, well, the only thing that's going to be available is I'm going to have to go in and have my tubes tied or my husband was going to go have to go in and have a vasectomy. I didn't realize there was any other long-term solution. And having the IUD in and having it changed out every couple years just wasn't an option that wasn't necessary. We had decided our family was complete. Gina is a, uh, a registered nurse, very aware of the potential risks of surgery and of uh, hormonal birth control and was looking for a way to not have any more children with the least amount of risk associated. And I talked to Dr. Lieben about a long-term solution and he said, uh, have you ever heard of the Escher? You should come in and have it done. It's a uh, minimally invasive procedure that uh, is done in the office under local anesthesia most of the time. It involves pla the placement of a tiny microcoil into the fallopian tube we do it on both sides and it, uh, the body's own tissue will then grow into the microcoil and form a mechanical obstruction of the tubes. No cutting, no hormones and almost no blood loss at all. Didn't require a hospital stay, didn't require my husband going in and having a procedure done which he wasn't really thrilled about having so it was really, really easy. No downtime, no pain, <laughs> no you know overnight stay. Um, I didn't, didn't have to worry about it. The kids were home in the afternoon and I was fine when they got out of school. When the procedure is done correctly, the 10-year data says that it's 99.7% effective. So we seldom ever see a, a pregnancy failure. I wish that more women knew that this was an option that was out there, that you can make the appointment, you can come into your physician's office, you can have it done during the day with little to no downtime and have it be just as effective as an, as an overnight, you know, tubal ligation stay in the hospital. She was just delighted she didn't have to worry about birth control anymore and certainly not the risks of hormone therapy uh, associated with, uh, with the contraceptives anymore. Well, that'll do it. That'll wrap up another edition of the Best Docs Network, featuring some of the best physicians in all of the Houston area that are helping to change people's lives. And of course, Candace, for more information out there for any of the doctors you see on today's program, head to the website, bestdocsnetwork.com. That is the place to go. And if you have a question or comment for us, you know we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. So long, everyone. We will see you next week.